We asked you, who has left you feeling ripped off when it comes to your holidays? And you came back to us with a catalogue of travel disasters. They didn't care. They were not interested the impact they'd had on our holiday. The standard of service that we were given was unbelievable. It destroyed that holiday completely. Whether it's a deliberate rip-off, a simple mistake, or a catch in the small print, we'll find out why you're out of pocket and what you can do about it. Your stories, your money. This is Rip Off Britain. Hello and a very warm welcome to Rip Off Britain and our special series on holidays, which this time around comes after a particularly turbulent period for the entire travel industry and, of course, as customers. So today, hopefully, we'll be making sense of what all of that means for you. And indeed, with so many long-standing, well-established companies actually going to the wall, that really has thrown up a lot of questions about the future of all of our holidays, yeah. questions that we're going to be doing our best to answer. And as the dust settles on those headline stories, we're going to be troubleshooting some of the problems that uh, they've thrown up. Well, obviously, the way we choose and book our holidays these days is unrecognisable from the way we used to. And while there's no doubt that that creates plenty of opportunities, there are also big pitfalls. And we hope that by the end of this programme, you're going to have a better idea of how to navigate them. Coming up, the Thomas Cook customers still struggling to get their cash back. We still don't know anything. We don't know if we're getting any money back. I might cry. And the Disney dreams left in tatters by a now notorious online travel agent. I think the most devastating point of it all was when I realised there was no booking in my name. I felt very naive. Now, there can't be many people who miss the news that Britain's oldest travel agent, Thomas Cook, went bust in September 2019. The Civil Aviation Authority, of course, swung into action with a huge rescue operation costing millions. Overall, that was a big success. But we've heard from a number of people through the program who fell through the net. And while, of course, that was distressing for them as individuals, their stories raised much wider implications for anyone looking for a holiday in the future. So we've been finding out what it all means for your next trip. Despite huge efforts over a number of months, we have not been able to save Thomas Cook. When Thomas Cook collapsed, industry regulator, the Civil Aviation Authority, launched Operation Matterhorn, chartering £100 million worth of flights to bring 140,000 stranded customers back home. I think it's worked miraculously. We've had no hold-up, welcomed by people, guided us through. Very lucky. Very lucky, considering all the staff that lost their jobs. But this vast operation was just the most visible of a number of measures taken to make sure that Thomas Cook customers either got home or got their money back. Except, even now, not everyone has. Because for all the efforts made to help the stricken holidaymakers, some of you have been telling us that you've still lost out. And that includes ex-flight attendant Yvonne Keeler and her husband Paul. They'd booked flights with Thomas Cook to Elguna on Egypt's Red Sea coast, where they had been many times before. It's 365 days a year sunshine, so it doesn't really matter what, what time of year we, we choose to go. They'd only been in Egypt for a few days when the news broke about the company's demise, but shock turned to relief when they heard about Operation Matterhorn. As Yvonne and Paul had booked return flights for Thomas Cook, they duly filled in the application form online to be brought home. It had a list of dates, and um, those dates finished on the 6th of October, which wasn't too helpful for us, seeing as we weren't due back till the 13th of October, a week later. Passengers returning after the cut-off time were advised to make their own arrangements, so Yvonne and Paul started desperately looking for flights home. But Thomas Cook's downfall seemed to have sent prices spiralling as thousands of passengers tried to book. Every time we went back in, the same flights were there, but they'd gone up in price. Or, or they'd gone. Eventually, they managed to get two one-way tickets with Turkish Airlines via Istanbul, and that cost £621, paying nearly £250 more than the original price. 
I did feel a real strong sense of injustice that nobody was assisting us. There was absolutely no contact. To get her money back, Yvonne turned to the long-established passenger protection scheme, Atoll. If an Atoll protected company fails, passengers are entitled to a refund for accommodation costs and flights. But as Yvonne soon discovered, Atoll only covers package holidays, and because all she had booked with Thomas Cook was flights, therefore she wasn't eligible. Even more frustrating, many other people who weren't Atoll protected either were being taken home as their travel dates did fit in with Operation Matterhorn. How is it that they can assist some passengers and not others? Travel expert Simon Calder says that if you're not at all protected, you have very little comeback in these situations. I have sympathy with Paul and Yvonne in that they tried to get back on one of the repatriation flights. But the thing is, they were not in any legal sense entitled to be on those flights. They had taken the chance of booking a trip, uh, flight only, without atoll protection. And if that happens, well, then it's down to you to find your own way back. There were well over 50,000 really lucky holiday makers who were brought back, even though they hadn't paid for atoll protection. But just because they were, I'm afraid you can't say it's not fair, we weren't, because ultimately they were taking a risk. With neither Atoll nor Operation Matterhorn being able to help Yvonne, she's left wondering if all the protections in place for holidaymakers are fit for purpose. And loyal Thomas Cook customer Jan Foster has been left thinking exactly the same thing. Keen Baker Jan and a partner of 20 years, Brian, haven't had much luck with holidays lately. On their trip to the Norfolk Broads in 2018, Jan nearly lost a leg in a boating accident. I was on the back of a boat and I slipped into the water and I broke my leg in four places. Once Jan was back on her feet, by way of celebration, Brian decided it was time to tie the knot. When Brian proposed to me, I thought he'd dropped something on the floor and I was searching around saying, well, what you've dropped? Bless him, he went down on one knee and said, would you marry me? I threw my arms around him, cried a little bit and I said yes. As well as a perfect wedding, the couple were hoping for an idyllic honeymoon. At the local Thomas Cook shop, they carefully selected the best holiday they could afford. We sat in that chair just there and we both picked a holiday. They settled on 10 days in Rhodes, the largest of Greece's Dodecanese islands. The travel agent arranged the flights, hotels and transfers for just over £1,400. We were served by a Thomas Cook rep in a Thomas Cook uniform. She was the most loveliest lady in the world. She was so helpful. She wanted to get the best deal for us possible. As the weeks passed, rumours about the travel company's finances started to hit the media. So Jan did her best not to worry. Then just over a week before the honeymoon, Thomas Cook formally went into liquidation and immediately ceased trading. I was quite shocked, to be fair, and spoke to Brian straight away. And um, I said, well, what are we going to do now then? Well, like thousands of people all over the country, Jan and Brian tried to find out what exactly was going to happen to their holiday by phoning and emailing the company. Nobody ever rang us, nobody ever spoke to us, we didn't have any letters, no emails, we had nothing. Finally, on the 7th of October, there was some good news. It was announced that all Thomas Cook customers who paid in a shop by direct debit would be refunded on the 14th of October. Hoping to use the money to book another honeymoon, Jan and Brian waited and waited, but nothing happened. Unable to get through to anyone at Thomas Cook, she phoned the airline to see if they could help. I spoke to a gentleman and he said, your flight went ahead. And I said, what do, you, what, what do you mean? I was in like shock, complete and utter shock. What do you mean our flight went ahead? Jan was told that while she might have booked her holiday at a Thomas Cook shop, the flights had actually been reserved with TUI's airline and the flight had gone ahead as scheduled. He said, you were classed as a no-show, so I'm ever so sorry, but you won't be getting a refund. 
The couple had booked a package with Thomas Cook, but the flights were provided by TUI, who are very much still in business. As they'd been labelled as a no-show on the TUI flights, Jan and Brian were told that they were not covered by their atoll certificate and were not eligible for compensation from the CAA. As far as we're concerned, why did we have to not get any money back? That just wasn't fair. She put in the application to the CAA anyway, and while she waited for a response, the wedding day was everything that she and Brian had wanted. It was a brilliant day. It really was. I'm not just saying that. It was. It was perfect. I felt like a princess. Even so, they were still without the honeymoon that they'd hoped for. We still don't know anything. We don't know if we're getting any money back. I might cry. <sighs> Our holiday last year was ruined when we had an accident. I had three months in hospital fighting to save a leg. Then we wanted to go and get married and just go on holiday and it was the end literally the end of 18 months of pain and hardship but when we put Jan and Brian's case to our travel expert Simon Calder he was confident that in the fullness of time common sense would prevail I'm pretty sure that once the dust has settled the Civil Aviation Authority will say, well, yeah, you booked a package. Um, you had every right to assume it wasn't happening. So therefore, we will pay you back for the cost of your trip. So we did speak to the Civil Aviation Authority, which runs the Atoll scheme. And it told us that all Atoll protected Thomas Cook customers with future bookings are able to claim for a refund, even if their flights were with another airline. It says that information has been on its website since the day the company ceased trading. The CAA went on to say that it aims to turn around all claims within 60 days, but urged anyone who thinks that they're entitled to make one to do so as soon as possible. Which is exactly what Jan and Brian had done. And I'm delighted to say that Simon was right, because since we filmed with the couple, there's been great news. They've had a full refund, and now they're planning a replacement honeymoon. But while their story had a happy ending, the collapse of Thomas Cook still raises many questions for the whole holiday industry, not least whether there's a future at all for mainstream high street travel agents. Well, Simon, for one, is convinced that there is. For about 30 years, people have been prophesizing the imminent death of the high street travel agent and the package holiday. I am pleased to say that both of them are thriving. Package holidays remain excellent value and they come with gold-plated consumer protection. So if anything, the Thomas Cook collapse should steer us back to doing things the traditional way. Simon thinks that one thing that would help passengers might be for the UK to adopt the same rules as Germany when it comes to insolvent airlines, allowing them to keep flying until all the passengers are brought home. He reckons that that would be a much cheaper solution than launching a massive rescue operation. Personally, I don't think we'll see anything like a collapse on the scale of Thomas Cook for many years to come. But if there is, I do hope by then everything's organised so that the airline can keep flying because you had the ridiculous situation with the Thomas Cook collapse of a great airline, fantastic planes, terrific pilots, wonderful cabin crew sitting doing nothing while the government spent £100 million bringing in airlines from abroad uh, for Operation Matterhorn. Well, later on in the programme, we'll hear how the collapse of Thomas Cook has led to some of you finding your way to smaller online travel agents that you'd never previously even heard of, leaving you dangerously exposed. I feel travellers in general aren't protected by anybody. Nobody's upholding the regulations, nobody's policing anything, and the customers are being let down time and time again. Millions of us are totally comfortable with going online to book our holidays these days, whether that's direct through an airline or a package company website, or even with third-party businesses offering reduced rates and deals. But knowing which of those are really going to deliver feels more uncertain than ever, not least when you can now find holidays promoted largely through sites like Facebook. 
Well, we've heard of one such company that had hundreds of delighted customers until it all began to unravel. Disneyland Paris. For more than two million Brits a year, it conjures up images of stardust, sparkle and magic. And Nikki from Dumfries wanted to capture just a little of that with her four children. I wanted to treat the kids to Disneyland Paris. Uh, I'd been twice before with the boys. My little girl's never been. They'll always be yeah. there. Just to see her reaction when, when she's seen them up close, it, it would have been amazing. While searching online for Disneyland deals, Nikki came across Go West with Mickey on Facebook. The company described itself as an independent travel service and offered tailor-made trips to the Paris theme park at bargain prices for the perfect experience. All the reviews were just amazing. There was not one wrong thing said about them at all. After contacting the company via Facebook's messaging app and receiving a swift response, Nikki was already beginning to feel the magic. The company were great to deal with, to start with. They were absolutely, they were really friendly, so helpful. Nikki's confidence in the company was boosted by the stream of warm messages she exchanged with staff. I felt that, not that they were my friends, but I felt as if I could trust them. Impressed, Nikki booked four nights and five days at the Disneyland Hotel inside the park, paying a total of just over £3,000 directly to the company via bank transfer. Any worries she might have had about handing over such a large sum of money were settled by reassurances on the company's website. They said they were insured by a company called Towergate. They said that if anything had to happen, they're fully insured, so I was like fully protected. With the package booked, Nikki and her family were hotly anticipating their Christmas holiday, especially her son, Max. I really wanted to go because I got told by my friends that there was different ride, more rides at Disneyland Paris. Getting into the holiday spirit, Nikki went online to read about other people's experiences on a forum for Go West with Mickey customers. And that was the moment the spell was broken. I noticed all these negative reviews, comments, and then somebody on the forum had said to me, have you got your documentation and your reference number? And I said, no, I didn't actually know that I needed to have that. Nikki started to worry. She contacted the company who told her that they would get the booking reference number to her shortly. But the comments popping up on the forum were getting worse and worse, with some customers now claiming that their trips had never been booked. I started to think, no, I don't think my holiday's been booked. Like all the rest of the people on, on the forum, I just didn't know what to do. I'd never been in a situation like that before. In desperation, Nikki contacted Disney directly through their main switchboard. The lady was really helpful. She asked me the name and the hotel and the dates and how many was in the party. And there was no booking for my size of party for my dates. And I was totally devastated. Realising that no booking had been made, Nikki attempted to retrieve her payment to go west with Mickey through her bank, but with no joy. She realised she had probably lost both her £3,000 and the holiday that she and her four children had been so looking forward to. Her son Jack saw the stress that his mum was under. It was just a lot of emotions coming in at the same time because I knew that my mum spent a lot of money trying to put it in to the holiday and my dad was working a lot. Nikki had paid the company directly via bank transfer, sending money straight from her account into that of Go West with Mickey. I was never told that if I transferred money from my account to another, that I had no protection. And I'm afraid we've heard from many other customers whose experiences with the company have quickly gone west. Former travel agent Amy Ahan was also looking to capture some of the Magic Kingdom sparkle when she booked with the company in August of 2019. I have amazing memories of being with my family at Disney when I was you know, similar to my boys' ages. Um, it is a dream to be able to, to take them to these places, the places that I experienced as a child. 
And as with Nikki, the highly personal tone of the Go West with Mickey staff filled Amy with confidence. They would ask, you know, is there anything else that, they, that we needed help with? They felt like somebody that we could trust and that wanted us to have the best holiday. Amy paid £1,125 via bank transfer for four days for herself and her family at Disneyland Paris. It is difficult when you've got two small children, um, and both of you are working, to raise the money. Uh, we hadn't quite hit what we needed to be able to um, save in order to go, so it was actually my mum that um, put up the money for us to be able to book this and to be able to go away as, as a family together, the five of us. And there was a particular reason they'd booked a year in advance. Amy's son has special needs, so they hoped to be able to iron out any problems well ahead of time. Our youngest child has been diagnosed with global developmental delay. Um, he is non-verbal. Our oldest son, he is amazing with him. Um, he looks after him and he's his best friend. Um, so this, was, this trip was kind of just to give us a chance to enjoy the time together after a hard year. When Amy received her invoice from the online travel company, it even included the logo of the insurance company, amalgamated with Go West with Mickey's own trademark, which seemed to suggest a close association between the two businesses. But she too then began reading online about Go West with Mickey customers, whose bookings were not being honoured. So like Nikki, she also contacted Disneyland in Paris directly, who gave her the news that she'd been dreading. I think the most devastating point of it all was when I realised there was no booking in my name. I felt very naive. Amy too had lost her holiday as well as the £1,125 she'd paid for it. On the 21st of September 2019, Go West with Mickey formally ceased trading. The company's website and Facebook pages were abruptly closed. Amy and Nikki's hopes of getting their money back then rested with Towergate Insurance. But the company says it never provided insurance cover to Go West with Mickey and had issued the company with a formal warning to stop using its name and logo. Just as worrying for customers, Disneyland Paris has told us that Go West with Mickey was never an official commercial partner as it didn't meet Disney's strict requirements. As such, it was an unauthorized reseller. Disney also said that after receiving complaints about the company, it has now launched an internal investigation. Meanwhile, the Association of British Travel Agents told us Go West with Mickey had never been an ABTA member either. And worse still, it may even have been breaking the law, as ABTA says it is a legal requirement for tour operators selling package holidays to provide financial protection for their customers. And that failure to do so is a criminal offence. Now, we did ask the person behind Go West with Mickey for their side of the story, but they chose not to respond to our questions. The upshot for Amy and Nikki is that neither is likely to see their money again. Go West with Mickey used the social media platform Facebook to market its Disney holidays and communicated with customers using Facebook's messenger service. And consumer expert Martin James says you should watch out for any company doing its business that way. I'd automatically be wary of any organisation that uses a social media platform like Facebook as the primary way to actually sell its holidays. There's simply no recourse if you're, something is going wrong and it's very hard to check up if they're legitimate. There are a couple of things that you can watch out for as well. Warning signs are when firms ask you to transfer money directly as opposed to taking credit card or debit card payments. If you transfer money, pay by cheque or pay in cash, make sure you can see if the firm has a proper website, see if they're registered with Companies House, and even then that doesn't mean that a company is legitimate. But do a bit of research first and never trust a company just through social media. But, like all good Disney stories, there is a happy ending to this one. For Amy, at least. She was eventually able to take her family to Disneyland Paris after she and her parents scraped together enough money to pay a second time. And we're pleased to report they had a wonderful holiday. But for both Amy and Nikki, learning about the perils of booking a holiday through social media has been a tough lesson.
I wouldn't book through a social media page again. I will be looking at organising trips directly with suppliers from now on. Under guidelines introduced in 2018, banks are compelled in some situations to reimburse customers who've been the victims of fraud. And the number of Go West with Mickey's customers were funded by their banks on that basis. But others, including Nikki, were left out of pocket because the company's bank insisted that Go West was a failed business rather than a deliberate scam. But for Nikki, it's not just about the money. It's about happiness, it's about memories and magic and spending time with my kids and those memories is worth a lot more than money and it was took away, it was snatched away from